Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to address the Atlantic Council panel on NATO's Vilnius Summit, Ukraine and the com uh, completion of Europe. Thank you for inviting me to provide Polish perspective on that. As a result of Russian brutal invasion in Ukraine, we face a security crisis we have hoped we will never face again a full-scale conflict in Europe. Russia's aggression has proven Moscow's neo-imperial ambitious. Its general disregard to the European security architecture and rules-based international order, as well as readiness to use a military force against its neighbors. There are no doubts that the attack has been planned from the very beginning of the Russian military buildup. Before the invasion, Moscow had cynically played for time continuing its apparent engagement with the West. To complete necessary military preparations with no good will to find a diplomatic solution. This lesson should be considered while reassessing further approach to Russia. From the very beginning of the Russian invasion in Ukraine, the Belarusian regime has sided with Moscow supporting directly the aggression. Therefore, equally to Russia, should face the same level of our pressure on them. Poland is committed to, to the 360 degree approach. Therefore, we continue participation in efforts aimed at uh, tackling challenges related to the NATO southern flank and EU southern neighborhood, which are usually associated with uh, countering and preventing terrorism and illegal migration, as well as stabilization of the region. But there is a need to ad admit also a growing Russia's footprint on the 360 degree principle. Moscow strives to influencing the security situation from Arctic through Eastern Europe, Black Sea region, South Caucasus to the Middle East and North Africa not only by military, but also hybrid instruments, including Belarusian hybrid attack on Poland and Baltic states, orchestrated by Moscow as a prelude to the aggression in Ukraine. In fact, it continues to this day. We still face the migration pressure on Belarusian border, similarly to the countries are recently impacted again by the migration through the Balkans route. No country can fully address entire spectrum of threats and challenges alone. Therefore, the entire Euro-Atlantic community must take proactive stance to counter Russia's efforts to undermine the rules-based international order and threaten our security. That highlights the importance of an effective NATO's deterrence and defense strategy. Therefore, we welcome NATO Madrid summit decisions enhancement of NATO's battle groups on the eastern flank, scalable to the brigade level, also significant extension of NATO force structure, including through gradual increase of the high readiness forces. Coupled by decisions on uh, pre-positioned equipment and stockpiles of military supplies, as well as robust NATO command and control arrangements. It demonstrates the unified perception of all allies on the need of a long-term NATO adaptation and increase of allied presence in the NATO's eastern flank. The adaptation which should transform NATO assurances from forward presence endorsed during NATO Warsaw Summit in 2016 to the forward defense. Able to ensure the deterrence by the nail of every inch of NATO's territory. There is no alternative to such approach. We cannot afford the risk of uh, regaining territories which potentially would be occupied by Russia, also considering atrocities and war crimes committed by its army in Ukraine, as well as uh, the devastation is the price of uh, pushing Russia back. We welcomed President Biden's strong message in Warsaw and Madrid on keeping our further enhancing US engagement in deterrence and defense against Russia. 
Now it's time to implement it on the ground by a number of deliverables that should be adapted at the Vilnius summit. It refers to robust and fully sources, uh, sources defense plans, improved uh, command and control, as well as uh, increased commitment of allies in terms of defense spending and force contributions. The US leadership and the fair burden sharing of all allies are of paramount importance uh, in this process. Until Russia will be ready to accept a political solution of the conflict, guaranteeing the long-lasting security of Ukraine, there is a need to continue sufficient, comprehensive support to Ukrainians. We need to remember that they pay the highest price fighting for their and our freedom. What Kiev can achieve at the negotiating table is very closely linked to the situation on the battlefield. To stop the onslaught, uh, it is uh, of crucial importance to enable Ukraine to push Russians back from all captured territories. To make that gain, we should maximize a comprehensive pressure on Russia to limit its capacity for action and finish the conflict as soon as possible. It is of crucial importance to ensure that we are united and at the same time effective in this effort. We welcome the unprecedented Euro-Atlantic unity that has been built after Russian aggression started. We need to keep this unity. Our support must be decisive, ensuring that we are not only able to contain Russia, but also create conditions to enable Ukraine to defend itself, which will get us as soon as possible to the ending phase of this war. Instead, Kremlin de facto has announced its readiness for further escalation. Kremlin's recent activities, especially Putin's irresponsible nuclear rhetoric, including plans of uh, deploying nuclear weapons to Belarus, is also a signal that uh, Kremlin is still not ready for the political solution. And uh, it will not be ready until Russian leadership will understand that aggressive policy is uh, counterproductive. Instead of abandoning Ukraine, as Moscow expected, we provide Ukraine with further multidimensional support, including military assistance. We have also opened for Ukraine the door to European Union. Instead of uh, weakening uh, the NATO, allies keep it united, strong, ready for the defense and deterrence. Also, we should keep alliance open for new members to join, as it has happened in the case of Finland, and hope soon will happen with Sweden. In such uh, circumstances, there is a need uh, to deepen a comprehensive pressure on Russia to revert its strategy, including uh, through political, economic and technological isolation, including maximized sanctions policy imposed not only by the Euro-Atlantic community, but all like-minded partners across the globe. We need uh, to convince a broader spectrum of countries that still keep their relations with Russia that Moscow's irresponsible behavior is not in their interest. Sanctions must be not only extended, but also sealed. There is also a need to reinforce the message directed to the Russian society to stop this brutal aggression. At the same time, there is a need to continue the military support related to the supplying Ukrainian armed forces with armaments, munitions, equipment servicing, trainings. There is a need for synergetic effort on both sides of the Atlantic in this regard including coordination between EU and NATO countries. The solidarity realized by financial contributions is also valuable, especially if donated by countries which for some reasons are not able to participate otherwise. Even though we not always assess the, that those reasons are justifiable, it can contribute to the backfilling 
which might be essential for further donations or investments related to increasing of the production capacity of decisive armament and munition. Through this effort, we can simultaneously reach the goal of increasing the security of Euro-Atlantic community, investing more in a defense industry which maintain also our defense capabilities. Ukraine must win this war. And after that, it should win the post-conflict period when the Russian aggressiveness will continue to destabilize Ukraine and wider region at least. Rebuilding Ukraine after the conflict will also require our commitment. It must be undertaken simultaneously to the process of accession of Ukraine to the EU. There is also a need to keep NATO door open for new members with no exclusions, including Ukraine. Comprehensive integration of Ukraine with European and Euro-Atlantic community will be the best investment for the stability and prosperity of all of us. To this end, the message from Vilnius Summit to Ukraine should be reassuring and keeping active the prospects for future Ukraine NATO's membership. With this crucial message, I would like to thank you for your attention and I am wishing you a fruitful debate.